Hi guys, welcome to my tip video for Undecember. I've been playing all five days since launch, uh, grinding a lot, completely non-pay to win I have to say. I spent money on stash tabs, that's the only thing I got. And I am currently sitting on the top of the leaderboards, like top 100 in all the relevant leaderboards. Yeah, and I want to share my learnings of the game. I recorded most of the clips while playing the game because I don't have so much time to make a professional video and I'm not a YouTuber, so I'm just sharing what I found out to the community, so hopefully it helps you guys. Um, apologies if I cough or something during recordings. Um, I'm currently being sick with the coronavirus. That's why I could play so much. Yeah, I hope you can enjoy. You should always make sure to run alchemy all of the time, combining runes in synthesis, since they can give really good support runes that increase your damage by a huge amount, gigantic amount. You can see here, 80,000. And that's why you should always keep it running. If you run out of runes, do a twink run or buy them. You should always keep all of your revive scrolls for later. You really n need them in the end game to do the uber bosses. Or you can also um, use them for the end boss in Act 10, which is really hard, or like any of the super hard bosses that you just can't manage to get down with without them. But uh, what you should do when you cannot kill a boss immediately is you should go to a lower level act and just run that farming experience. I'm doing the example of that right here. If you go to act 7 for example, there's some good spots that you can run. In this area you can do a little circle getting a lot of XP. In this area you can run the boss which is super easy. It's a really easy boss and the boss always gives a lot of XP. In this area you can do a boss run um, I have a video on that. You can check it out on my channel. And yeah, I leveled until level 60 in here. And while doing that you find a lot of goblins and stuff like that. And the next tip just goes along with that. Once you are done with a run, you don't have to use a TP scroll all the time. You can when the free one is available or when you have some lying around. But you can just go back to character selection, log into the game and you will be back in town. So n now that I've already reset this area and I've run this area and I've run this area and I've run this area and I want to um, keep farming experience but all of my areas are on cooldown so what you can do is go to select world which locks you completely out of the game and by doing that, the game forgets that you saved any of the zones. And the zones sh should be reset. Wait. And the zone is reset. For some reason it didn't work on the first try, but you can see the zone is fully reset. And this zone also reset. Yeah, and then you can keep doing your low level act even if you're faster than the reset timing. In many games like Path of Exiles, resists are the most important stat that you can get. I find in this game it's not as mandatory to have it. I'm currently running tier 5, tier 6, tier 7 uh, maps. And as you can see my resists aren't even kept. Like it's nice to have them, but as long as you're a range character and keep your distance, you can easily clear maps. 
without any problem. Just need to be a li <laughs> little bit careful, but even boss fights I can clear without that. And for specific bosses, you can always craft gear and just cap their resistance types. Your pet is your best friend for being fast in this game. So of course they are hiding it behind a paywall for getting this thing here to collect your loot on its own and to disassemble stuff which is not that great but the looting is good. Um, what you need to know is you don't actually need to wait for your pet to pick up the stuff. Once the stuff gets off your screen the pet picks up the it up uh, automatically so you never have to worry about anything lying around except if you switch the zone before switching the zone wait f two or three seconds if there's any loot on the ground so your pet can pick it up otherwise you don't get the loot all the other loot the pet will automatically teleport back to you once you get out of sight of it um, yeah but the shitty pet costs a lot of money so what you can do is you can go to the store and then to comfort and if you go to the uh, section here um, you can see it costs 150 rubies rubies can be uh, bought for money but you can also get them as a free to play player by selling stuff on the auction house which you can use for free three items at a time if one is sold you can put another item in so you don't have to wait for collecting your money you can put another item immediately and as you can see I made 400 rupees just from selling stuff legendary items sell for more and faster but if you have good rares or craft good rares then yeah you're good to go the next thing is only upgrade your main skills um, for example here my leap jump teleport and the supports for that they are all level 1 this here I leveled a little bit because it gives a big damage boost the meteor I leveled a little bit but mostly I focus on fireball and the supports for that it costs a crazy amount of gold to upgrade them um, I wasted a lot of gold on random stuff don't do that keep your gold for the end game so you can upgrade your skills later on you need to also spend gold on disassembling um, crafted runes to get the rare upgrade essence which I haven't gotten yet so far mostly pay to win players got that it's really hard to get minus magic still um, <coughs> there's also the option to buy one here later which is really expensive though it's hard to get these points I got a lot of them for being top 100 in different ladders but Usually you will be only having like one or two hundred by by the time you get to tier five maps. <coughs> Another way of getting this essence is by assembling it in the alchemy table. Another good use for that, by the way, which can be done here. Out of um, oh no wait. think here yeah out of 10 of these you can make one so that's why you should do your twink runs for your main ability you want to hit a six link rune with six so slots for supports um, as soon as possible there's a lot of tricks for doing that on how you can get the essences the main thing early on is uh, buying them for this resource that you can get from your maps. Um, you can buy hundreds of them here and then use them <coughs> on here and the game actually has a pity system. So when you roll this it says here 12 out of 1500. Once you hit 1500 tries without hitting the 6th link it will automatically get the 6th link. For me, sadly, I had to go through 1,500, but I didn't buy any. The only only thing I bought was dash steps in this game. I've done it completely free to play within three or four days um, by using this vendor here. And by using the alchemy table, you can combine your um, other crafting mats into 
into these. I did all of mine, all of these ones here. I combined them into these. The color ones I kept because they are sometimes you want to hit specific colors and that can be hard. So you want to keep those, but these ones here is not so necessary. Once you have a six link, you can just um, not bother with this. So you mostly want to transfer them into these until you hit the six link. While leveling, you should clear all of the maps 100%. I only realized that later on. And then you can collect um, or as a reward from the game. Wait. Starting from Act 2, you can collect these ores. And you, you can also use them for buying your upgrade essence for the six links. When you are mapping, focus on the speed you can have for clearing maps. It is better to clear tier 1 maps super fast than taking forever to clear high level maps. As you can see <coughs> here when the damage is good you can literally just uh, walk through these mobs and then focus on this. Doing two of these or three of these is better for you than doing one high level map. And then you can focus on getting more damage. Levels is a big amount of damage that you get in this game. So the most XP you farm the better. And by running two or three of these maps uh, you definitely get more experience than from one or two tier five maps. And um, that take you forever. You should focus on maps that you can run in less than 4 minutes. Ideal is less than 3 minutes. Usually for the easier maps you can do it in 2 or 2.5 minutes. If the layout sucks like this one here, then of course it takes longer, but in the open maps yeah, you can do it fast. You should definitely join a guild. Just go here, find any guilds that are not full that you can join doesn't really matter you don't have to play with your guild if you don't if you want to be a loner like me i just joined a random guild and i'm always donating to this guild and you should also do that for that you need these guild markers you can also donate gold but gold is kind of valuable i tend to do it you don't have to and then once you um yeah the guild markers can be found on the floor I think starting in Act 6 you can find them, but yeah, I haven't found any before Act 6. And then on your daily missions you can also get them. Sometimes as rewards. Yeah. And then you can go to your guild hideout. That's the reason why you want to do this. And go to the vendor there, which is selling you stuff for guild points. And as you can see here you can buy um rare or magic rune um runes these are not actual runes but you can use them for combining them for the synthesis which saves you upgrade essences later on and what i like to buy a lot is um these thingies here they give you a random essence that can be normal magic or rare so you can do your daily limit by one of these, by one of these. Later on maybe by one of these. And then with the rest of the runes you can buy these. And that's how you get free synthesis crafts. In the game there's a training area here you can test your DPS. And that's one way to tell if your new weapon is better than the old one or not. And then you can see your DPS, how much did you do, blah blah blah. Yeah. If you're not sure if your new weapon is better than the old one or if your new ability is better than the old one, like the the support ability I mean, then you can test it there. Also, the next tip, you should use your other character slots. You can make twinks, 
run to act two, get your magic rune, and then uh, delete the character. Or you can also use them for your for a second um, alchemy table. Here and co combine more stuff. Do the longer recipes like talisman upgrades, or change all of your runes into um, birth runes for making six links. And this character can do that while you're doing other stuff that is taking short amounts of time in your main character. And then once in a while you log over to this character. Also your twin character. It doesn't have an uh, extra stash like in many other games, but you can still use it as a mool for 100 inventory slots that you can um, yeah, use for storing, for example, all of the gear that you want to sell on the auction house. You can put it on your twink and have extra storage slots. As a free player that doesn't use all of the stash tabs, or even if you paid for one or two stash tabs, it's still important to make your loot filter a little bit stricter. It can be just nice, for example, talismans. If you don't have the stash tab, there's they are s the game is spamming you with magic talismans and you cannot sell them, you cannot disassemble them. So you don't really want them. So I turned off auto pickup for them. It saves you a lot of annoying time dealing with that. And then you can also make here the exemption list from the loot filter, what you don't want to be picked up. For example, I put all of the smaller healing and mana potions on it. I don't want that. It's annoying me. And you can put other stuff on here too that you don't want your pet to pick up or your character to pick up when you get near it. This also works if you don't have a pet. The blacksmith is your best friend when leveling. Every new act, it sells you better gear. So make sure you craft new gear every one or two acts. Um, you just go here, buy all of the items once, that is good for your character, for example, barrier, 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 and then you craft them. That helps you out while leveling a lot, since every act has a different resistance type. For example, this one is lightning, this one is frost, this one is poison, this one is fire, and physical. So you want to go to the different acts, and once you reach the new act, you craft gear with fire resist. You craft gear with poison resist. You craft gear with cold resist. You craft gear with lightning resist. If you cap your resistance of that type, all of the bosses in the act will be a lot easier. They're still hitting you with physical damage sometimes, but it makes it a lot easier. For example, as a magic build, you can get these elemental damage daggers in the late game. You can buy them a bunch of times and you can see items have different roles. I got actually kind of lucky here. 99 to 123. So I can buy this like 10 times and see I can get the best one of them possible. That has a yeah, 90 until 133. That's kind of good. Um, then <coughs> Once you hit really good ones, 100 to 133, you can see 100 to 135, that is almost uh, the best outcome possible. You can use that as a crafting base. The only downside of this, these items, if you buy them from the vendor, you cannot sell on the auction house later. So you're only crafting that for yourself, later you cannot sell it. But while running the acts, I'm doing that the whole time, it helped me a lot. Yeah, the basic crafting guide, you can do this here, I guess. Um, this rune here, you want to use for getting free blue slots on your item. Mostly that's for that. There's no much other use for this. So, and once you hit free things, you're gonna want to use these ones to go through the free stats you have. You can also find the ones you want. For example, speed or damage. 
and then you can select the things that you want okay and have your game automatically reroll for them and then once you it will do 100 attempts I hit it on the first try now a little bad for showing but then you can use these ones to activate the third slot and later make it rare and now I didn't hit any good mods except the fire damage so I'm gonna revert it back to the gray outcome and then go again and later on if you have these essences you can also quality it 15 quality that's really good and I'm back to step one crafting good stuff on it here yeah, speed level one is bad so I want to go back to uh, step two adding the damage types that I want and having it roll through different options until it finds one of the mods that I want okay it found it what you should not do is make this here two or three then it will try to roll as long until you hit three times the stat that you want but see you can hit tier 10 tempo here and two question marks and it will just roll over that you can miss a lot of chances of uh, identifying good stats if you if you're rolling for free stats here that is not so smart to do and sadly we didn't have anything good here again so back to step one you can also use these for um, luck crafting they can go I think they can go to artifact weapons but so far this has never happened for me so yeah that's how you craft your own gear oh these ones are good stats let's see if we hit something not the worst dagger I mean mine is better probably but <coughs> that's how you craft your own gear in the early game another quick tip is to swap runes for example if I want to go into a boss fight I don't need the split uh, projectiles so I can move that out and move in the elite damage mod which is one of the best mods for doing damage to bosses as you can see if you upgrade that a little bit higher it gives 130 elite damage or on my build for example I just do this swap and then my fireball gets the boss damage and later I swap back or I move out this move that in here and this here depending on what situation or there's some chaos dungeon that has a crazy amount of mobs running onto me in the late game so I use the multiple projectiles on that so I can cover more area yeah that's that use your rune swaps you can also carry them in your inventory they don't need to be here if you don't have the slots but for convenience I put them in here if you don't have any maps to run anymore or you need specific ones for your dailies go to this guy here and just buy them I need the ones for you know so here I can tell which areas are that and I'm buying these and if you're looking for specific areas that <coughs> are like really open for example this card here actually I like running a lot so yeah you can buy five of them per day and then you have five good layouts they cost five thousand each so it's better to run free maps gold is valuable but you can do that fill up your room compendium that can be found in your daily uh, diary <laughs> and once you fill that up you're getting the bonus effect here of runes for example <laughs> and the more points you have the more bonus chance of finding stuff you get so that's basically magic find upgrade okay guys thanks for watching I hope you found some useful tips in that 
and I'm going to make uh, another video soon about twink runs, doing a full twink round, how I do it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, or maybe uh, post it to your friends so that everybody can have a better time with the game. Cheers.